Hey YouTube. Okay, I was trying to do a video on my desktop. As you can see, I am home. I'm not driving Grubhub today since I switch, I swap blocks today. So I just want to make a video since I was sitting here trying to, um, really trying to make a video, but I should be doing my preparing my um, receipts for my tax returns. So anyway, I just got through, I looked at my Uber statement, which I downloaded from the Uber website. And I wanna discuss about the Schedule K-1s that all of us will be receiving. Now, the let me tell you about the Schedule K-1. Now, the Schedule K-1 is basically the form that's used to report the um, taxpayer's portion of the income from a partnership. In this case, that taxpayer being the drivers or partners in this case, and Uber is going to send a Schedule K-1. Now, the Schedule K-1 is different from the 1099. Now, let me tell you the difference. Now, on the Schedule K-1, now everybody's Schedule K-1 is not going to show the same thing. But everyone with Uber is going to show the um, booking fees. Now, with the booking fees, I guess that must be the fees that Uber charges for the passengers. And I guess that's the fees that Uber takes out, which is the, either the 20 or 25%. Now, the... The fees and, you know, the fees that they pay us on the 1099 and what's going to be on the Schedule K-1 is going to be different. The difference is, is two things. On the Schedule K-1, let me move this back. Okay, on the Schedule K-1, it's going to include the Uber fees plus what they pay us and the booking fees. And it's going to include any other type of miscellaneous fees that Uber may charge. So everyone is going to have a different thing on the Schedule K-1. But anything that's associated with fees with Uber, so it may have, um, it may have like the credit card um, receipts for the gas, the gas cards, I think. Um, it may also have the fees that you pay to lease your cars. Um, booking fees is everybody's going to get that. And um, miscellaneous fees, I don't know what's miscellaneous about it. I guess it must be the bag. Maybe, it's, yeah, it could be the bag. I don't know. But just be aware about the Schedule K-1. is going to be given to everyone with Uber. Now, let me tell you the reason why Uber issues a Schedule K-1. The reason why Uber or most companies issue a Schedule K-1 is because it's used to report income. Basically, it comes from partnerships, S-corporations, or trusts, or estates. And another thing is, is that because the fact that Uber does not pay corporate income tax, they pass that fees or in most cases dividends to um, its partners so or investors so in this case the fees that uber took out of our pay and all any fees that some of you drivers may pay not just the booking fees but any other fees is going to be reflected in that schedule k1 and Uber does not have to pay. They, they will actually, they don't have to. They do not pay corporate income tax. But that's a whole different video altogether. We're just going to talk about our own filing requirements. Now, of course, the 1099 is going to reflect the, um, as an independent contractor, the income we received for being self-employed. And of course, you know, most of us, do not have taxes taken out of a 1099. So we are responsible for filing 
our um, quarterly estimated taxes. If you don't, if you have not filed your estimated taxes throughout the year, and say you worked and you did um, Grubhub, Uber Eats, all these ride sharing companies, and for the whole entire year from January to December, and you have not made any quarterly estimated taxes, you may be subject to not only a um, interest on taxes that may do, you may also be charged an estimated tax penalty for not making adequate estimated tax payments. So you will be charged a penalty if you have not made your quarterly estimated tax payments throughout the year. Now, that's the 1099. So with the Schedule K-1, let me also make that point about this too. Because we pay fees to Uber, those fees are tax deductible. You may be able to deduct those tax, those fees that we've been complaining about, at least I know I've been complaining about it, on your tax return. And another thing is most companies, Jackson Hewitt, H&R Block, tax accountants, no, not tax accountants because they should know. Anyone who's just a tax preparer, they're not going to know how to file a Schedule K-1. It is a very complicated form to figure out, but you are required to fill out that Schedule K-1. And depending on how many Schedule K-1s you receive, you may have to um, amend it, amend your return, if you have not filed that Schedule K-1 with your tax return. But it is going to be reported to the Internal Revenue Service after April 15th. So sometime in July, when all the corporate tax returns are filed, they are going to report the Schedule K-1s. So if you have not filed that Schedule K-1 with your tax return, then you may want to amended if you have not um, included the figures in that Schedule K-1. And that, uh, that even goes for in previous years. But that's a whole other issue altogether. Now, with that being said, since you could deduct fees from that Schedule K-1 on your tax return, it is a write-off you may also be subject to a lower tax rate. Let me say that again. You file your Schedule K-1, you may be subject to a lower tax, and that is the capital gains and losses. So I know for me, I haven't got all my um, 1099s yet from all the companies, but I had just looked at my Uber statement and I know for a fact, I'm probably going to have a capital gains loss, which will bring me to um, a lower tax rate. Now, most people have this attitude that they don't have to, you know, they're not going to think about it. They're not going to worry about it. And they say, well, I know I'm just going to report the mileage. The mileage on that 1099 from Uber or even if you do Lyft, that's just delivery miles. That's 